Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Friday, March 22nd, 2024. I pray that the Lord will continue to be with you. And I pray that his blessing and his favor will continue to be on your lives. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to speak to us. And may we listen to the voice of God as we seek to walk in his ways. Our reading this morning comes to us from Jeremiah 38, reading verses 1 to 28. And it says, Then Shephetiah the son of Matan, and Gilediah the son of Peshur, and Jokal the son of Shelmaniah, and Peshur the son of Melchiah, heard the words of Jeremiah spoken unto all the people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, He that remaineth in this city shall die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. But he that goeth forth to the Chaldeans shall live, for he shall have his life for a prey, and shall live. Thus saith the Lord, this city shall surely be given into the hand of the king of Babylon's army, which shall take it. Therefore the princes said unto the king, We beseech thee, let this man be put to death. For thus he weakeneth the hands of the men of war that remain in this city, and the hands of all the people, in speaking such words unto them. For this man speaketh not the welfare of this people, but the earth. Then Zedekiah the king said, Behold, he is in your hand, for the king is not he that can do anything against you. Then took they Jeremiah and cast him into the dungeon of Melchiah, the son of Amalek, that was in the court of the prison. And they let down Jeremiah with cords, and in the dungeon there was no water but mire. So Jeremiah sunk in the mire. Now when Ebed Melik, the Ethiopian, one of the eunuchs which was in the king's house, heard that they had put Jeremiah in the dungeon, the king then sitting in the gate of Benjamin, Ebed Melik, went forth out of the king's house and spake to the king, saying, My lord the king, these men have done evil in all that they have done to Jeremiah the prophet, whom they have cast into the dungeon, and he is like to die for hunger in the place where he is, for there is no more bread in the city. Then the king commanded Ebed Melik, the Ethiopian, saying, Take from hence thirty men with thee, and take up Jeremiah the prophet out of the dungeon before he died. So Ebed Melik took the men with him, and went into the house of the king under the treasury and took thence old cast cloth and whole rotten rags, and let them down by cords into the dungeon to Jeremiah. And Ebed Melik the Ethiopian said unto Jeremiah, Put now these old cast cloth and rotten rugs under thine armholes under the cords, and Jeremiah did so. So they drew up Jeremiah with cords and took him up out of the dungeon, and Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. Then Zedekiah the king sent and took Jeremiah the prophet unto him into the third entry that is in the house of the Lord. And the king said unto Jeremiah, I will ask thee a thing, hide nothing from me. Then Jeremiah said unto Zedekiah, if I declare it unto thee, wilt thou not surely put me to death? And if I give thee counsel, wilt thou hearken unto me? So Zedekiah the king swear secretly unto Jeremiah, saying, As the Lord liveth that made us this soul, I will not put thee to death, neither will I give thee into the hand of these men that seek thy life. Then said Jeremiah unto Zedekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, if thou wilt assuredly go forth unto the king of Babylon's princes, 
Then thy soul shall live, and this city shall not be burned, and thou shalt live, and thine house. Then, then said Jeremiah unto Zedekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, If thou wilt assuredly go forth unto the king of Babylon's princes, then thy soul shall live, and this city shall not be burned with fire, and thou shalt live, and thine house. But if thou wilt not go forth to the king of Babylon's princes, then shall this city be given into the hand of the Chaldeans, and they shall burn it with fire, and thou shalt not escape out of their hand. And Zedekiah the king said unto Jeremiah, I am afraid of the Jews that are fallen to the Chaldeans, lest they deliver me into their hand, and they mock me. But Jeremiah said, They shall not deliver thee. Obey, I beseech thee, the voice of the Lord, which I spake unto thee, so it shall be well unto thee, and thy soul shall live. But if thou refuse to go forth, this is the word that the Lord had shewn me. And behold, all the women that are left in the king of Judah's house shall be brought forth to the king of Babylon's princes. And those women shall say, Thy friend have set thee on and have prevailed against thee. Thy feet are sunk in thy mire, and they have turned away back. So they shall bring out all thy wives and thy children to the Chaldeans, and thou shalt not escape out of their hand, but shall be taken by the hand of the king of Babylon, and thou shalt cause this city to be burned with fire. Then said Zedekiah unto Jeremiah, Let no man know of these words, and thou shalt not die. But if the princes hear that I have talked with thee, and they come unto thee, and say unto thee, Declare unto us now what thou hast said unto the king, hide it not from us, and we will not put thee to death, also what the king said unto thee. Then thou shalt say unto them, I presented my supplication before the king, that he would not cause me to return to Jonathan's house to die there. Then came all the princes unto Jeremiah and asked him, and he told them according to all these words that the king had commanded. So they left off speaking with him, for the matter was not perceived. So Jeremiah abode in the court of the prison until the day that Jerusalem was taken, and he was there when Jerusalem was taken. Amen. We give God thanks this morning for the reading of His Holy Word and we are grateful for these wisdom and I pray that as we continue to read and as we continue to study that we will seek to gain the understanding that is needed and make the necessary application as we go day by day. So we realize here, for speaking the truth, that Jeremiah was cast into prison. In fact, he was placed in solitary confinement, the dungeon, the worst part in the prison, where the troublemakers go. That's where Jeremiah was placed. All because he told the people to leave the city because of the impending judgment that was coming upon the city. And he told them that if they remain in the city, that they would receive of this judgment. They would die by the sword. They would experience famine and pestilence. And so they were told to leave by God through the prophet. And of course, there are some folks who just never like that. You can't be speaking the truth here. You can't be discouraging the people and telling the people them all of these things. And so they made a complaint. They went to the higher authority to make a complaint. They went to the king and told the king that Jeremiah should be put to death. Because what? He is causing fear and panic in the city. And the men 
they have no courage if he keep telling them that they are going to be killed and that they are going to experience all of these terrible things. And that is what how we end up in the prison. But you know, I love the way that God works. When the devil is planning against you, God is planning for you. Because God provide a friend through the Ethiopian who would help to get Jeremiah out of prison. Because Jeremiah did nothing wrong. And so the, the eunuch went to the king and told the king that, Look here, this thing that you're doing to Jeremiah is not right. And this is going to cause us problem. And the king told them to get him out. Now, this is a prophecy that will repeat itself. In the last days, the world will do the very same thing to God's people. In fact, in a lot of places and a lot of cases, they are already doing so. When you speak the truth or you speak anything about God, standing up for God, people are offended. Especially when you, when you start to talk about prophecy and stuff like that. You step in upon people too. Just for telling them what the Lord says. But when the Lord gives you a message to tell, you can't keep silent. And so the people need to know the truth. So if destruction is coming and you need to escape for your life, then you need to escape for your life. You can't remain as if nothing is happening or nothing will happen. Do you understand? And so standing up for God and standing up for righteousness and truth, we must keep in mind that it has consequences not because you did something wrong but because you are doing what is right so when you tell a person that they should not steal and they make trouble for you because you tell them that they shouldn't steal when you tell a person that they shouldn't kill and they make trouble for you or they should stop corruption and they make trouble for you because what you tell them that corruption is wrong and they should stop these are the consequences of living a good life and living by the truth. You will face persecution. Jeremiah faced persecution because they are saying that he's troubling the people. How is it that you telling somebody the truth, troubling them? Shouldn't you want to know the truth? But that is who we are. We are not interested in the truth. We want to keep living our lives the way we see fit. And so, when somebody come to us and say anything that interrupts that, we have a problem. And that is why you realize that a lot of people these days, even Christian, they don't want to say anything to anybody. Because what? They don't want to offend anybody. So, the immoral lifestyle and principles in the world keep growing and growing. I am free to do what I want to do. So, who is you coming to tell me that this is wrong? This is not wrong. I was made this way. Were you? Okay. So, friends, what am I saying this morning? My message to you this morning is that we must stand up for God no matter the consequences. Jeremiah did not fear for his life. He stood up and he spoke the truth. Even though he was cast into prison, he did not recant his truth. So we need to do the same. Stand up for the truth as it is in the word of God. So it's not just about what you believe in God. What you believe in probably is not the right thing but stand up for the truth as it is in the word of god and god won't fail you okay so may god bless you and keep you amen